coming off the past couple of training videos, the building blocks, which were found up here on the insert tab in the text group under the quick parts, and it's right there. What I want to cover now are the other three, the field, document, property, and auto text. First of all, auto text is used to add sentences or paragraphs in your document after you type in the first four characters of the saved auto text sentence or paragraph. So how do you save a sentence or a paragraph to the auto text? could be even just a few words, doesn't have to be an entire sentence. Well, first of all, you have to type it in. So let me go ahead and click down below and I'll do my company's name here because, you know, every time I close a letter, I want to type in my company's name. Instead of typing it completely out, I can go ahead and use the auto text feature that after I type in the first four letters, it'll give me the option to go ahead and accept that and have it insert the rest of it for me. So when you type in whatever you want to have as auto text, Go ahead and click and drag to select it, or since the cursor is at the end, I'll hold down the shift key and hit the home key. It selects everything from the end of it to the beginning, and then come up here on the insert tab, go to the text group, quick parts to auto text, and save selection to auto text gallery. Now I could come down here and click on save selection to quick parts gallery. They both bring up the same building block window. So for example, auto text to auto text gallery, we're creating a building block except it's got to be auto text if we want to use the auto text feature and for it to also appear in the auto text gallery. So close out. If I came back up here and said, eh, I'll just go ahead and save selection to quick parts gallery, that's fine. But we got to change the gallery from quick parts to auto text for the feature to work and to also be saved in the auto text gallery. So the name of it is Dreamforce. And we can give it a description down below saying it's company name. And everything that we talked about when we learned about building blocks, the category save in options, you can go ahead and watch that training video. I don't want to repeat that, except to emphasize that it has to be in the auto text gallery if you want to use the auto text feature. So let's go ahead and click okie dokie, and it's there. Let me click off, hit enter a couple of times, come back up here to the text group. Click on Quick Parts to Auto Text, and it's in the gallery. And you can see there's the title when I hover over it and the description. So I can right click on it and get all the different options that we talked about in the building blocks that are also available here. That you can edit the properties, make your changes if you want. Click Cancel. Let's do that again Auto Text. Right click, and also to organize and even delete the auto text. When you click on that, it has it selected. Of course, you can edit it and change the name or the description. Let's click Cancel. Even delete it, which I don't want to do. We'll say no. Close out. Having said that, to go ahead and use the auto text feature besides, you know, coming up here and clicking on the auto text and clicking on Insert, which of course will insert it. Let me hit Enter a couple of times. You can also type in the first four letters of that auto text, like D-R-E-A. There you go, first four. And you can see that little pop-up. That's the auto text feature saying, look, you can go ahead and keep typing, but hey, if this is what you're typing, Dreamforce comma LLC, then just hit enter. Wondrous. So go ahead, type an entire paragraph. Just know that the first four letters of that paragraph, when you type it in, is what's going to pull it up. Now here's something to consider. You can go back, as we talked about, and click on it to auto text and right click to edit the properties. And how does it know which first four letters to type? Well, it's looking at the name here. So if I go ahead and delete that and type in comp for company, well, it has to have at least four letters in the name because if it doesn't, and I just type in three to save it in the auto text gallery, click okie dokie. Are you sure you want to redefine it? Say yes. And when I type in C-O-M-P, it's not going to pull up because it needs at least four letters to define it. Let me go ahead and hit undo. If I type in D-R-E-A, see it's not even pulling up because it's going off the name. So let's go ahead and hit undo. Go back to it. Quick parts, auto text. To right click. To edit. And let's do C-O-M-P. So it's got to have at least four letters in the name. Click okie dokie. Redefine. Yes. So when I type in C-O-M-P, there you go. That's the name for the auto text, and that's the auto text that's going to pull up for that name. 
you can see in the pop-up just hit enter and you notice I didn't even have to type it in uppercase well for the first letter uppercase C it can be even lowercase so it's not case sensitive in any case hit enter and there you go now you're probably wondering like I am well what's the difference between doing it this way and using autocorrect well autocorrect you don't have a choice if you use autocorrect and you type in the first couple letters you hit the spacebar automatically converts it where with auto text if you type in the first four letters you get the option whether or not you want to continue by hitting enter if you're typing in something else it begins with DREA or in this case we changed it to COMP like composition and not company autocorrect would force you to accept it after you hit the spacebar where auto text would be like you know you can go ahead and hit enter if not just keep typing okay control A hit the delete key to get rid of all that let's come back up here click on quick parts auto text right click organize and delete with it selected let's go ahead and delete it say yes close out quick parts auto text it's not there okay next is the document property now we haven't talked about this it's in a later training video so you may want to go and jump ahead to watch document properties but what it's doing is that the document has its properties or information about the document that's not on the front stage it's all backstage like who authored the document something more simplistic like the title of your document as opposed to the file name the subject about the document the manager company's information company name like I said those are all properties of the document something that well for me I wouldn't want to type all that information on the front page because that's something that's maybe typically not something that you want up front on your pages so in any case you can go backstage let me click off click on the file tab info selected by default and there you go there's the properties and here's some of the things that we talked about like the title of the document the author there I am you can also scroll down and show all properties and it shows more properties and if you want to see even more than that and like I said we'll cover this in more depth in a later training video click on properties and go to advanced properties and you got five tabs on the summary tab well there you go you can go ahead and type in the title of your document it's in any case the subject the manager could be me and so if you want to go ahead and pull those fields from the properties area backstage and then go ahead and click okie dokie and click back and then come back up here quick parts document properties so if I choose author it pulls in the dynamic field for the field properties the author so any changes I make in here or backstage it'll automatically update it that's why it's got its own little special box because if it didn't then any changes that I made backstage it wouldn't update it here and that wouldn't be cool now the box will disappear if you click on the outside of it so that way it's you know not annoying you or the reader when they're reading it but when you click inside of it well there you go it's tagged so if I come in here and I type in an extra S and I go backstage file come down here click on properties go to advanced properties there you go there's the author with the extra S and if I delete it backstage and get rid of the S and click okie dokie and then click back it updates it there so it's dynamic what you do in one updates the other one of the reasons why you may want to use this is that when you create your document maybe it's a boiler template that it's generic you go ahead and you send it off to companies and you got some text in there then they can go ahead their author that wants to tweak it goes backstage updates it and so at the end it'll have automatically if you put the field down below pull in their name from backstage also the title of that boiler template you know do some simple merging updates from what you have available backstage and the properties that you can bring up stage or to the front from the quick parts and so you can see that well you don't get any extra options till we click outside of it you can also right click on it and remove the content control and what that does is that well now it's no longer pulling from the backstage it's its own text so you can see that there's no box what I do here won't update the backstage let's go ahead and delete that and then click on quick parts and then finally the field click on that and you got all the different categories for inserting different types of fields like even include the field for the author if you want it to be an uppercase lowercase yeah, let's just do all uppercase and click okie dokie 
and it inserts the author's name. I mean, well, we could have done that from the document properties, but if you do it as a field, you get a few more options, the least of which is, hey, we can do it all in uppercase. Let me go ahead and hit undo and do one more. Click on it. Let's do field again. And this time, instead of seeing all, let's look at date and time and choose date. And then we get the date formats over to the right hand side. Let's do date with time. And you can see the date formats. M is for month, D is for day, Y is for year. And you can go ahead and tweak it and say, you know what? I don't want the four numbers or the four letters representing the four numbers for the entire year. Let's just limit that to the last two digits of the year, 2017, by deleting two of the four Ys for year. And click Okie Dokie, and there you go. It just has the two here and not 2017. And if you go ahead and right click on it, you can also update the field. Wow, it went from 18 seconds to 28. Man, am I yammering. That's a long time. In any case, you can, as you can see, right click to update it. You can also toggle to look at the field codes. And you can see the code. It's merging the information over into the box. And then you can go ahead and right click to toggle the fields where Alt F9 will work. Alt F9 again. There we go. Toggles back. And then we can right click on it. We can edit the field if we want to add those Ys back. Why? Because we want. 2017 to appear not just 17. Then to go ahead and get rid of it, you can click on it and then you can click on that little three ellipsis button because you want to be able to select the entire box so you can hit the delete key because if you don't click on it and the cursor is still flashing, like if you click on the tab here, you see how the cursor is still flashing? When you hit the delete key, it's not going to do anything. So come back in here and make sure that you actually hit the three little pigs, hit the delete key, and then you can get rid of it. Either that or hit undo. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.